welcome, or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. But what did you know is that today we are talking about Dose of Colours Snow Angel Palette. And that's the palette I've used today to create this stunning look. So, if you want to find out just exactly how well this performed, you, my friend, are in exactly the right place. Here comes a tutorial. Hey, welcome back from the intro. I've just knocked everything over. I'm just such a klutz. Right, you will have seen this in the intro. And the inside looks like this. So it's a quint, just five shadows, but that's absolutely fine. Now, I have done swatches. I'm going to put them up on screen. And I'm hoping this time that when I upload them to YouTube, that particular level doesn't get deleted because the last film that I put up, <laughs> I said, I'm going to put some swatches up now. And I did. And I uploaded it to YouTube, and for some reason, that entire level got wiped. So, I'm talking away about all the stuff that's on screen, and all you can see is my face. Sorry about that. So, uh, I guess actually the beauty of this is there's no names to it. So, uh, it's just shadows one through five. Awesome. Um... A little bit of housekeeping that I always sell my videos. My videos are aimed at all skill levels. So if you want to speed me up, feel free. Regular viewers who have watched a lot of these, once I've zoomed in, I'm going to talk through the type of brushes to use if you have hooded eyes. Again, if you don't need to hear that, skip forward until you see me starting to put colour onto my face. Well specifically my eyelids. Okay, I'm gonna zoom you in. The face has been washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed and I used my usual face primer, antiperspirant one. Uh, the film with more details about that is listed in the description box below. So, let's get you zoomed in. All I've got on my eyes at the moment is some Conceal and Define that I've got set with uh, Coty Airspun, as I always do. Now, when I look straight ahead, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner corner to outer corner. So I don't have hooded lids. If you don't see that, you either have a full or a half hooded lid, or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. Now, what I do have is deep set eyes. So if I put this handle of this brush to cover all of my mobile lid that you can see and then close it. You can see I've got as much lid again that folds back away. So I do understand the issues that people with hooded lids get because I get that. I get transference of shimmers onto the upper lid etc. Having to do ridiculously huge um, cut creases rather than being able to just follow the shape of my eye socket. Now, you can still follow my tutorials. When I start off, I'm going to be using a big fluffy brush like this, and then going to move down to a more tapered one like this. Now, whatever the size of the head of the brush, that's how far it's going to blend the shade out to. So when I'm using this one, if you've had to, um, if you've got lower brows or you've had to adjust where your crease is, this is no good to you. You need to start with this one. And then when I move to this one, you need to come to this, which is a tapered crease brush. You can see, unlike a pencil brush, it's still nice and loose for blending, but it comes up to a point. This particular one is from Coastal Scents. Now, 
What I was saying about moving the crease up is if you do have hooded eyes or a monolid and you want to follow this tutorial, get a flat brush or a pencil brush or something like this and with your eye open just sketch out where you will need hmm sorry where you will need your crease to fall okay obviously that's going to move your crease up and reduce the amount of space here so you know follow the directions for um, which particular brushes to use right it is now time to put some colour on my eyelids. So, because those brushes need cleaning, I'm going to start off with this is my Royal and Langnickel Chic Pro Crease Brush. I love this. It was two quid and it's one of the best brushes I have ever, ever used. Okay. I've got my um, colour switch here, but because the sponge is tearing, I'm just going to tap off into that because it makes the clean up easier than having powder all over your desk. And I'm going to use a clean washcloth to take the colour off of the brush. So, now, bearing in mind, we have four striking colours and one more muted tone. So I'm going to start off with shade one, which is this sort of taupey colour. I'm going to start off here. I'm going to do little windscreen wiper movements backwards and forwards. Now I'm following the shape of my eye socket. If you've had to move your crease, then you follow that. All right. I always start from the outside edge because if you do deposit too much, powder. It's much easier to blend it out here than it is over here where your nose is in the way. <laughs> right, and now it, there's a little bit of kick up in the pan, so I'm just going to pick that up on the brush to do the next bit. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to keep the brush initially in contact with this line we've laid down, but we're going to do little circles all the way across to the nose and then without lifting the brush off we're going to move it up slightly reverse the direction and come back again overlapping the first lot that we did and then because I've got deep set eyes I can go up again go back to the original direction and come back along now I like to leave sort of four or five mils here below the lowest part of my brow and continue that all the way across so it ends up about seven or eight mils here um, it's just it's a more flattering look it helps to <clears throat> ensure that oh, I've gone really croaky sorry <clears throat> helps to ensure that any um, brow highlight we put on is nice and noticeable and it also is more youthful because um, if you carry the colour up to your brows, it's a dead giveaway because that's what we used to do in the 80s and 90s, and it's a dead giveaway of your age. So I struggle here and here to get pigment to lay down, um, and I very often have to pick up a little bit more and just gently tap onto the outside corner here. I'm not too worried about this bit here because I'm going to be popping some darker shades on but I do just like to just deepen that corner up just so that it matches the rest of my lid and then I just do a mixture of really big circles and little tidy windscreen wiper movements just to make sure we don't have any gaps or any white bits because I'm 44 years old lost about 10 stone in the last few years so the skin on my eyelids moves around and where I'm blind in this side, this eye got pulled around a lot when I was like five six years old and I've got really deep permanent creasing here as you can see um, sometimes the circles will work sometimes I have to do a slightly different trick on this eye 
but I will show you that when we get to that stage. Right, I'm now going to repeat exactly what we've just done over on this side. So, I'm going to start off with my windscreen wipers backwards and forwards just to lay my crease colour down. And then go back to the pan, pick up the kick up. Bow, bang, bow, 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 bow. Sorry. And I'm just going to do little tiny circles across the eye and back again, reversing the direction. Just to gently blend this out and give us a really nice, soft, seamless Hello John McLean look again I'm just going to tap on a little bit of extra pigment just on this upper corner if you find you've got a particular patch of your skin that doesn't like to take pigment you can always do this once you've done the sort of the circles to blend it all out if you've got someone that's being a bit stubborn then you know just tap a bit of extra pigment on like I've just done there and it's absolutely fine Right, if I show you, it's not that obvious with this colour, but I have still got um, stripes there, so I, I have to pull the lid out ever so gently and just come in and just gently smudge those stripes away. Do not do this unless you absolutely have to, otherwise you will end up with deep creasing like I've got, and I can promise you that creasing only gets worse as you get older. Right, colour time. Ooh, temptation. I'm going to go into the blue. So I'm taking the colour off of this brush, still using the same one, and I'm going to go into the brighter of the blues. So shade number four in this. That's a very, very bright blue. And initially I'm going to start off doing exactly the same thing by running it through my crease like so. It's a very, very vibrant shade. I like this. And I'm going to pick up a little bit more. Now this time, we're going to do the circles again, but we're not going to travel up the eye. We're going to stay in contact with this line all the way across and back again. I'll show you what I mean. So, we're doing circles across to the middle, we're still reversing the direction, but we're keeping it low, we're keeping it in touch with that line, because I still want that first colour to have its moment and be able to be seen. Alright, so go backwards and forwards a few times just to make sure we've got a nice good blend of the two shades. Now obviously because the blue is going over the more muted shade, it is muting the blue down slightly, but I don't mind that, I, quite, I think that's quite pretty. And now I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the other eye. With my chronic pain I can't blend as quickly as some people do, but that does of course mean that if you are a beginner, you can definitely keep up with me. I'm really not worried about this because I'm going to put a darker colour on anyway. This palette is all matte, um, which is quite nice actually. You don't often see a smaller palette like this that's all matte. They're normally sort of like two mattes, three shimmers, or three mattes, two shimmers. You very rarely get an all matte quint palette. So I'm just going to just build that colour up there a little bit, there we go. So backwards and forwards with the blue until we've got an equal look both sides. That's really pretty actually, it's a really pretty blue. Right, I'm now going to come down to a more tapered brush. This is the 
um, Lord and Nine Little Sheep Pro eyeshadow brush. And I'm going to go into um, the deep blue on the outer edge. And I'm initially just going to tap that onto the outer third of my mobile lid. Wow. Okay, that's got some pigment. That's nice. And then I'm going to run whatever's left on the brush very carefully and gently through the crease. Okay. And then what I'm going to do tiny, tiny, tiny little circles on that crease line because all we're trying to do is soften the edges of the line we've put down. We're not trying to blend it up because I still want to be able to see this blue and I still want to be able to see the original typey shade that we put down. So I'm just gently and carefully just blending that out. Just really lightly softening That's actually a very, very pretty shade. And now I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the other eye. So, I can show you a bit easier with this one because I can close this eye. So I'm going to tap the pigment onto the outer third of the lid first. And then very, very gently buff what's left on the brush through the crease. And then tiny, tiny circles. Just to blend and soften the edges of this sort of navy that we're putting in. And you can really see the striping there now. So I'll just give it a little bit of assistance. That's nice. <clears throat> I'm actually going to, using this more tapered brush, I'm going to go back into that brighter blue. Obviously, um, if you've got the reduced eye space, when I'm using this tapered brush, you should be using that tapered crease brush that comes up to a point. Um, I'm just going to use this and really carefully buff over the edge just to deepen that blue up slightly because we have lost it a little bit of putting that where the, um, the navy blue is so bright or deep I just want to deepen up the, the more sort of vivid blue so I'm just really gently buffing I'm going to have to tap here to get it to go on because of creasing and not liking to lay pigment down. So I'm just gently buffing along the edge of the navy with this brighter blue. Yeah, that's nice. <clears throat> Do exactly the same on this side. Just to, I was happy with the depth of blue when I initially put it on, but once I realised how deep that navy was and how beautifully rich it was, I just wanted to build this blue up a little bit more, just to give it a little bit more impact. Now you can see a my viewfinder, it's looking a little bit patchy here, but I think that's my eye rather than the shadow. But if you do get that, just pick the pigment up and tap it into place and then lightly buff over it and then tap back across again. See, in my mirror, this does not look at all patchy. 
but in my viewfinder it does. I've had this before where I'm like, oh, it looks patchy on my viewfinder, but then when I um, when I'm editing the footage, it doesn't look patchy at all. So I'm hoping that that's going to be the case. But I promise you, in real life, this is absolutely not patchy at all. If it was, I would tell you. So I'm just going to take the blue off of that brush. I'm going to go back in with the original brush, pick up a little bit of the first shade we used, that taupe, and just gently buff the edge of that blue, just to gently sort of blend it into the taupe a little bit more. Just to soften it so it's not such a harsh, the blue finishes here and then the taupe begins, you know. There, that's nice. Right. I'm now going to get a flatter brush. Now this is a Soeco brush. Uh, I would tell you what it's called, but I've had it so long that the name has actually washed off the handle, or rubbed off the handle, because I don't get the handles wet when I'm cleaning them. So, um, yeah. So Eco, you need to find a better way of getting it on the brush. You either need to etch it in, or you need to put it on the ferrule, because you're having a bit of a fail at the moment, love. Right, now initially I'm going to put this on dry just to see how much pigment it's got. So I'm picking up the virulent pink. I'm just going to pop that on the inner third of my lid. That's actually got quite a bit of pigment. I'm going to do the same this side, but because of those deep creasing, when I'm packing a colour on like this, I do have to stretch my lid out, otherwise it tends to skim across the top, and then I get a fallout through the day, which is not pretty. I'm really quite impressed with this, it's actually got a lot more pigment to that matte than I was expecting. I wasn't sure it would actually go over that to navy blue once I'd seen how deep it was. But that's actually... That's really pretty. Right, and now I'm going to go in... I'm cleaning the colour off the brush. And I'm going to go into the sort of mulberry... Actually, it's the colour of my car at the moment. And I'm going to pop that on the part of the lid that we haven't given any colour yet. Okay, that doesn't exactly look too much different to the pink, does it? So I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to apply this shade wet. If I can get my spray. There we go. I'm using um, Obsession Pigment Boost, but you can use anything. You can use moisturising spray like Fix Plus or Mario Badescu. You can use a priming spray. You can use a setting spray. You can even just use water. But never put a wet brush into a packed pigment. So, I'll put the pigment on the brush. Wetting the brush. I'm just going to dry the ferrule off so that there's no moisture goes down and loosens those bristles. And I'm going to pack that. Yeah, that gives us the depth of colour that I wanted. Okay. It's not so easy to apply a matte wet. Um, I'm just going to use the, the 
washcloth to take all the colour off of the brush. And I'm going to very lightly buff over where that meets the pink. And then again where it meets the blue. I might pick up a little bit of the blue actually. Just Clean and dry the brush. Wet the brush. Dry the ferrule. And apply it to this lid. buff over where it meets the pink and where it meets the blue pick up a little bit of the blue and just lightly buff the edge there okay right I am going to go off camera and I'm going to do my foundation etc I will be right back to finish off this eye look and uh, if you get fallout because we haven't done our base yet you can just flick it away I, I often get fallout with this eye because um, where the eye got pulled around a lot when I was a kid it does move a lot more when I'm blending shadows on it so that's why I've I've started to do my base after I've done my eyes um, I just find it easier than, than putting a load of powder down because trust me when I say baking, once you're over 40, you should be left for the kitchen. Baking, not your friend, once you have fine lines. Okay, so I'm going to go and put some uh, face stuff on, foundation, that's the word I'm groping for. I'll see you right back here in a split second for you. Okay, I'm back. Remember to do my brows today. Last couple of times I've done my face, I've completely forgotten to do my brows until I'm putting my brow highlight on and then I'm like, my brows, not looking so hot right now. <laughs> okay, uh, I think I'm going to go, I'm going to use a flat top brush like this and I'm going to go into that um, mulberry burgundy shade number three. That we applied wet. I'm just going to apply it dry, just right tight up under my lashes here, going about two thirds of the way along. And the same this side. Awesome. I love getting those when you feel me. Yes, I'm flinching because I don't have any peripheral vision this side. So as I've poked myself in the eye once already this morning, I'm definitely trying not to do it again. I'm yet to determine my accuracy. Right. Uh, I've then also got brushes falling everywhere apparently. Marvellous. I've got another flat top brush that's a lot thicker and I'm just going to use that to pick up some of that pink, the bright pink or shade number two. I'm going to tap off well and I'm going to really gently buff that just to soften that deeper line we've put down and to tie the top and bottom looks together. Now, yes, you do have to be careful when you're using pink under your eye because it can make you look a bit sickly. However, um, I can't really use stuff in my waterline. I have, I have done looks where I've put 
um, liner in my waterline and it's fine for about half hour 20 minute you know and then it starts to um, make my eyes stream and run and I end up with whatever colour the eyeliner is down my face and collecting just here in a very attractive eye booger. So if I use black, it's a black one. If I use green, it's a green one. You, you, you get the drift. Just taking all the colour off of the brush just to soften those lines a little bit more. Awesome sauce. I like that a lot. I'm going to go in with one of my Becca highlights today. This is uh, Pearl Flashes Gold. Uh, and it's basically um, a cool toned gold which is difficult to get because the majority of gold shadows are very very yellow based whereas this has got a white base so it's got the, if you know the, the Becca shadows it's got the pearl white base and then flashes the gold as like a duo tone so I just think it's really pretty so I'm putting that on the inner corner and then bringing it down just to meet the colours that we've put underneath my eye. That looks lovely. And then I'm going to just pop a wee bit under the tail of my brow here. This helps to give an illusion of the brow being lifted which uh, gives a much more youthful appearance because as we age our brows and our lids tend to sort of lower um, so you'll find you'll get less and less lid space as you get older so anything that gives an illusion of the brows being higher than they actually are is a very good youthening, if that's ever a word, effect. Okay, so I'm going to go off camera and do lipstick and mascara because you all know how to apply lipstick and mascara, right? And I'm going to put some um, highlighter on my cheeks and everywhere. And I will be back once I've done something with my hair as well for final thoughts. Alright, see you in a moment. Okay, I'm back. Uh, Lippy, if you're wondering, is uh, bullet lipstick. It's the Makeup Revolution or Revolution Makeup Renaissance range and it's in the colour is called Greatest and this is probably one of my favourite bullet lipsticks ever. I just love the colour, it's so wearable. Oh, I say that I wear green as a wearable lipstick but what I mean is it goes with any look that you're going to do. Um, the mascara that I used is this Catrice Cosmetics Glam and Doll Volume Mascara Waterproof that uh, Nikki Raven recommended. I'm so glad she did because it is a bang on dupe for the benefit uh, bad girl bang but it's waterproof and it's cheaper awesome as you can see highlight is in place but uh, what we are discussing today is snow angels so what do I think of this palette I actually really like it although there are only five shades and I used every single shade today you don't have to, you could just use the taupe for an everyday look. You could just use the taupe and the pinks, you could just use the taupe and the blues. Um, you could just use the pink and the blues and not do the taupe at all. Uh, you could just use the lighter colours with the taupe, you could just use the darker colours with the taupe. Yeah, there's, there are a lot of options with this. Um, oh, me saying there weren't, uh, there are actually shade names. Okay then, so apparently, now I hate when they do this because I don't know whether the name here relates to this one or this one, so I'm just going to read them out to you. Thin ice, zero degrees, very cold, pretty bold, cashmere, I'm guessing this one's cashmere, so cashmere, pretty bold, very cold, zero degrees, thin ice. Because blue normally represents cold, so I'm, you know. This is the first time I've used Dose of Colours, 
and I really, well, for eyes anyway, I've had lipsticks, I really like this. Um, I'm going to be looking out for some more. I, I'm really tempted actually by their marvellous mauves or mauves as, as they say in America, but I am aware that I've got a lot of palettes with those shades in because mauve tones and berry tones for me are what I call a neutral palette. So it's difficult, you know, it's very, very difficult. But this, if you can get your hands on it still, because I believe it was the Christmas release 2018, I picked this up um, from a mate of mine, basically, who got it, tried it, didn't like it, did I want it? Yes, please. So, you know. Um, I have seen a couple of these running around on Depop. Um, I, did, I popped on there just before I started filming, and the majority of them are between sort of like 15, 20 quid. So if you can get your hands on one of these, I would definitely recommend it because I absolutely love this look. I think it's fantastic. In fact, I would even go so far as to say it's fabulous. Right, okay. Uh, I hope you found that helpful. If you did, it would be awesome if you could please hit that like button for me. Comment, share, subscribe. When you subscribe, don't forget to ring my bell. Ring my bell. And choose all notifications so that you get told every time that I upload another one of these films. And talking of another one of these films, there's an awful lot for you to choose from now. Why not pop over and see if you've missed any recent ones? Or if you're new, get a drink, get a snack, put your feet up, open up a playlist and indulge. And when my ASMR voice has sent you very nearly to sleep, you can always go and watch one of my girlies in the Beauty YouTuber Growth Group and I am sure you will find something on their channels to interest you. Right, that's it. All that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.